Hello, I'm your host, Dr. Braha. Welcome to the Zermed Show. On the show, we will feature local physicians and healthcare leaders who are experts in their respective fields and who will share their experiences and wisdom with us. We cover a broad range of health topics on the show, and today we have Dr. Sudanba Hegde, Chief of Cardiology and Program Director of the Cardiology Fellowship Program here at New York City Health and Hospitals South Brooklyn Health. Dr. Hegde, we have a lot to talk about today, so we're going to go right into cardiology, blood clots, heart attacks, uh, things that people watching today are really, really interested in. Uh, but before we get into that, patients always ask, where are you from? How did you end up here? And uh, what brings you to South Brooklyn Health? Thank you, Dr. Braha, and thank you for having me in your show. Uh, it's a great opportunity to talk about some of the wonderful work we are doing at South Brooklyn Health. Um, I trained at SUNY Downstate uh, and worked at Kings County Hospital. Um, I've been working uh, there since 2007. My primary area of uh, expertise is managing patients with acute MI. So when patients come in with a heart attack, we are the team that's there to take care of them 24 hours a day, uh, 365 days a year. We have a team that's built around focus first on preserving life, then on making them feel better and getting them home. Um, I've uh, been at Kings County um, and SUNY Downstate till uh, 2021. And in Jan, I joined the South Brooklyn Health uh, and I've been here and been uh, instrumental in building our primary PCI program. Uh, which is uh, whenever patients have chest pain, uh, they are brought to our hospital by the EMS team, and then we get involved in immediately taking care of them. So we've been successful in the last two years. We've uh, done numerous cases, have some incredible saves, uh, and uh, we are very excited to bring this program to a large community of people where uh, timely management of heart attack is vitally important, saves lives, uh, and it's an incredible service that we can provide. Yeah, I, I think for the viewers today, uh, Dr. Hedde is maybe playing down a little bit of what he does. Um, I was a, a resident in Brooklyn uh, at a center that took care of heart attacks, and doctors like uh, Dr. Hegde are waiting at the door when someone arrives having a heart attack. And uh, the team you have is specially trained, particularly for one type of heart attack where the large vessels of the heart are blocked. And unless we unblock them, something terrible can have them, happen to them. So tell us a little bit, we wanna go through the word soup of heart attacks here. There's something called STMI or STEMI, where there's a, a change on the EKG that tells the paramedic or the EMT or another doctor there's a blockage in the heart and your team is waiting for this 24 seven. Tell us how you treat this incredibly dangerous type of heart attack. That's very true. The ST elevation MI is uh, a critically emergent situation. Uh, and the city has a wonderful uh, service where the FDNY will recognize this EKG and immediately transmit the EKG to the nearest hospital. Uh, and we happen to be the nearest hospital for almost 800,000 people. So we are a very busy center with a huge experience. And combined with my own experience in the past, uh, it, it's been a wonderful journey to manage these patients. Um, in general, what uh, happens is that once the EKG shows these changes that are suggestive of a large vessel occlusion, it gets immediately transmitted to the hospital the hospital immediately activates us and we are ready to take care of the patient. And all of this is coordinated uh, and uh, sim uh, coordinated with the team, with the ED and with us. Our ED has done a remarkable job of uh, accepting these patients, recognizing these patients, doing the EKG within 10 minutes. While the standard is 10 minutes, all our patients, whether they're brought in by EMS or whether they walk in, get an EKG done within seven minutes. Now that's a fantastic uh, achievement. 
given that all that is required for the patient to come into the ED. So I would urge people who are listening to us to be very aware that when you have these symptoms, it is important to seek help. Uh, and it's important to seek help uh, by calling EMS, uh, especially when you have symptoms of chest pain that doesn't go away you know, within three to five minutes, it's important to seek help through them. And I stress upon calling EMS in these cases is because when you have a heart attack, uh, some patients become what we call as electrically unstable. And you could have an arrest because of your heart going into an electrical dysrhythmia, uh, which requires an EMS personnel to be immediately available to you to defibrillate you. So even if you're close by and you think you can just drive there, it is safer to call EMS, have them bring you in. Should there be that low risk of you having that event, they are well equipped to manage you. Uh, again, I say this in patients with a heart attack, it's important to make it to the hospital, it's important to preserve life, and it's important to be in the right hands. Uh, EMS are the best equipped people to manage this. Yeah, you, you bring up probably the most important point of heart troubles and chest pain is early notification. Correct. Right. So if somebody watching today, you know, what Dr. Hegde is talking about is that, you know, if we have chest pain or chest discomfort and it's not just a fleeting sort of burp or a, uh, a heartburn that comes and goes over the course of a minute or so, we have to start worrying, is this a heart attack coming on? Because the earlier we intervene as physicians in a heart attack, the better the outcomes. Uh, time is heart, time is heart muscle. Yes. And so uh, notifying the EMS allows somebody with specific training to do an EKG in the living room and then have that sent immediately to a doctor like you where they can see a heart attack is going on and EMS will bring you to the closest center where someone like you, a hero like you, is available to do a percutaneous intervention. Percutaneous meaning a needle through the skin where you can get a wire up to the heart and open up the blockage. That is true. To tell us the meaning of this PCI, percutaneous intervention. Uh, what happens when you recognize somebody with this type of a heart attack and they're there and, and you're waiting there for them? How does the process go where you bring them to your lab and open up this vessel? Tell us, tell our viewers a, a bit about this amazing technology. Right. And that process itself has evolved. Um, maybe about 10 years ago, we used to do most of our procedures through an axis in the artery in the leg. Nowadays, we do this procedure through an artery in the hand. Uh, that in itself is remarkable because once the procedure is done, for some people, you immediately sit up and in half an hour, you can have a lunch or breakfast. Uh, and it's a completely different experience. So have a heart attack and then get lunch. Yeah. After. Well, if they do very well. And some people, if they come in early, uh, they do remarkably well. Yeah. Um, they, the, the, the whole landscape of MI uh, with immediate relief of that obstruction uh, in some patients is remarkable uh, that we see the difference uh, in care. And that's been able to happen because we have newer catheters, softer catheters, uh, technology has advanced that uh, process that allows us to now do it through the hand. So it's remarkable. So we, uh, I would say in over 90% of our cases, and whether it be a regular case where we are looking to see if someone has a heart block or someone has been having chest pain and what we call as uh, non-ST elevation MI, where we suspect there is a heart attack, but we don't see the EKG changes of those uh, a, a heart attack, in order to be an acute emergency, we all do them through the hand. We are a center that does 90 to 95% of our cases through the hand. Now we do get extremis case where patients are collapsed and have had an arrest in the field uh, and are what we call as in total failure where the heart has just given up and they are in cardiogenic shock. Uh, where the blood pressure is extremely low. In, in such cases, we do it through the groin because we now have technology to support the heart. We have two technologies that can help the heart unload. One is called as an intraortic balloon pump, 
and the other is an axial pump called as impeller device. Both of these are a larger bore catheters that require a larger vessel to insert through. Uh, and they can help unload the heart and rest the heart so that the heart can recover. Uh, so, as I said, the key again becomes seeking that initial help. Uh, the earlier you come, uh, the better we can manage, uh, better we can understand your problem. So, uh, we, we've been doing the supportive management with these devices uh, called Impella and Intragic Balloon Pump in cardiogenic shock patients. Uh, and we have had some incredible uh, saves. We've had patients who have arrested in the field for about 35 minutes, brought into our hospital uh, unconscious. We've taken them to the lab, taken care of their problem, uh, and they've recovered and walked out of the hospital. Uh, it is an incredible uh, feeling to preserve life, to go back home to family. Uh, so uh, there are some incredible uh, stories. Yeah, this, this must be really gratifying type of work it is for it, someone like you yeah it is to me and to my whole team uh we have an incredible nursing team that's there around the clock uh, we have a ccu uh, which does phenomenal work in taking care of these patients once the procedure is done they are monitored uh, managed uh, and their care is coordinated with the primary care team as well as outside cardiologists we have patients who have private cardiologists on the outside. So we coordinate this care with them. So when they get discharged, their cardiologists get to know about their care. They can continue their care with us. We welcome them. But if they have someone who they've established care, we welcome them to follow up. When it comes to the care, obviously there's the immediate period of time where the patient called the ambulance. They arrive at your hospital. Your team is there to open up the blocked vessel. And as you mentioned, the critical, the cardiac care unit, the critical unit for cardiac patients is here. There's a whole team that goes to take care of the patient. And then for days and days beyond, they may need true care. We talked about this balloon pump, yes. which you insert through the groin and increases the blood flow to a heart that isn't pumping well. Correct. And uh, devices that help get the heart back into shape while the patient recovers from this heart attack. What is the prognosis? I know you, you have some incredible stories of recovery, but you know, for patients who come in here and they have um, a heart attack, in general, what is the prognosis for patients who undergo an intervention like this? Uh, you know, what should they think about or what should they know about the process of, of being treated for a heart attack and what the outcomes might be? They do very well. Uh, if you look at MI mortalities, you can look at it but the, not, the data is anywhere between 6 to 10 percent. Uh, and it can range in different regions. Depending that's on pretty where, high. Right? 6 it to 10 percent chance to 10 of, of not making not it. Not making it. Um, having said that, it also has regional uh, variations in this. But with the advent of access to primary PCI, a lot of that is changing. Uh, uh, you can see the overall mortality drop down to 1 to 2 percent now. That's and with your intervention, intervention, the PCI, for the viewers, the intervention where they put the needle through the, the wrist or through the groin. Groin, yes. Uh, the mortality rates down to 1% to 2%. Our own mortality uh, with the, in the two years that we've done is less than 1%. Uh, so it is remarkable that with timely treatment, you can dramatically reduce the risk of dying. Uh, so it truly comes down to preservation of life in some cases. The one area where uh, the mortality remains very high is the cardiogenic shock patients. They are where a large area of the heart is at risk. Cardiogenic and, shock, meaning the, the heart itself just doesn't beat effectively. That's correct. Right. And the pump itself is now severely compromised. In those groups of patients, the mortality remains pretty high. And what we are coming to learn is with the pump support uh, and the axial pump and impeller support, we can further reduce that mortality down from 50% to down to 20%. Now, that's, that's a remarkable achievement because it's been a long time where the mortality in that subset of patients uh, has been high for a long period of time. 
So uh, it's exciting to see where all the technology and teams that are there 24 seven can incorporate all these things into their practice to really get the mortality in the highest risk patients where there's a 50% chance of dying if, you're in, 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 if your main artery itself is closed, uh, that you can reduce that to 20%. Now, 20% is still very high, but you're really talking about the sickest of the sickest patients. These, these are the worst presentations. Worst presentations. But with the technology here at South Brooklyn Health, with the, the heart attack center that you've developed here, you're reducing mortality, you're reducing risks of really? dying dramatically. Huge, huge difference. Um, we used to, in the past, give uh, a medication to bust the clock. And they they are effective, but they are also uh, with risk. Uh, you could potentially bleed. Um, there are complications with that. And not everybody would respond to such therapy. So then you would need to go to another center to have a procedure like what we do now. Now, our, our program is uh, first choice to do primary PCI. Uh, we don't use lytics, uh, and it, it's made a huge difference uh, in patients' life. We have some patients who do so well uh, that they go home the next day. Uh, that is, uh, when you think about it's that, exciting. it's remarkable yeah. uh, where we've come uh, from the past. Uh, pe people used to stay in the hospital for at least three or four days. Uh, nowadays, they come and, you know, sometimes patients in the evening tell us, I want to go home uh, uh, because they feel that well. So uh, we have to say, no, uh, stay 24 hours. Let's see how we do. So earlier uh, they come, the greater the chance for us to rescue most of the heart muscle and people do very well. What has also changed is in the post MI uh, stage where some patients get heart failure, we now have a wide range of medications that we can now deploy to control the symptoms of heart failure and keep them out of the hospital. So it, medications have also changed uh, in terms of managing the post-MI complications. Uh, and luckily, in majority of the cases, we don't see a lot of the post-MI complication that we used to see in the past. Uh, with uh, restoration of flow or in opening the artery quickly, we dramatically reduce the post-MI complication, which is equally important. It's uh, you know, you have to survive and have a good quality of life. Uh, surviving is the first challenge, but once you do that, you want to have a good quality of life. So these procedures have not only decreased uh, risk of dying, but they have also decreased the risk of having subsequent uh, poor outcomes uh, with a heart attack. Right. So if you're watching today to our viewers, any symptoms consistent with a heart attack, chest pain, trouble breathing, you call an ambulance. And uh, as particularly in this area, you're responsible for uh, 800,000 people in this area of Brooklyn that uh, may end up meeting you one day and, and, and you may save their lives. So I, I think the message I got listening to you is the technology is here at South Brooklyn Health to stop a, a heart attack in progress, to restore life, preserve life, and help our, our viewers carry on with life. But they, the first step is you have to pick up the phone and call 911. Correct. Uh, get here quickly. Uh, uh, some people may say, I don't want to sound like a worry or, or, or a hypochondriac, but there's no shame in this. If you feel chest pain, call. Call. Yes. Don't be ashamed. Don't worry. If it's not a heart attack, better right. safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. And don't second guess it. If, you're, if the symptoms are something that you've not had and it's there, get checked. You'll get out of the hospital in half a day. Uh, we have a rapid tests that we can deploy. Uh, get an answer within four hours and you, we can send you home. Carry on your way. It wasn't a heart attack, right? Yes. So in Incredible. Uh, we have a little bit of time left. So let's focus. We talked about heart attacks and how you can intervene and, and stop a heart attack in progress and restore blood flow. Let's talk a bit about the lungs because the lungs can suffer from blood clots. We hear about this quite a bit. Things that we call DVT or deep vein thrombosis, clots in our legs. They can come from other areas too, but most commonly from the, the big veins in our legs, especially after sitting in a car for eight hours or on an airplane for 12 hours. Um, and for people who are at risk, say with cancers and other issues, they can develop these clots. They jump around through the artery, through the veins and end up blocking blood flow by the lungs and people can die of this. True. 
And you are also on the team of heroes who can stop this process. And this is called a pulmonary embolism. Correct. Tell us a bit about what a pulmonary embolism is and how here at South Brooklyn Health, uh, you are saving people from pulmonary embolisms. Thank you. That's a, that's a very important topic because uh, as you explained, it's essentially the blood clots from the leg that travel into the lungs and block the blood supply to the lung. But the impact of that is it has a huge impact on the right side of the heart, uh, which results in uh, patients having a drop in blood pressure because essentially a pump gets blocked. Uh, unclogging that is the next step uh, to do. And again, these are, along with the heart attack, these are the highest risk patients for us. So it's important again to seek help, get to the hospital. Uh, we have a uh, a CT scan that can be done and we can make the diagnosis immediately. So a lot of these patients get the diagnosis done within half an hour of getting into the hospital. And they, there are two pathways there uh, in the pulmonary embolism group. One pathway is they get lytic therapy where we give the medication to bust the clot. And there is another pathway where we go up into the lungs, well, we go up into the venous side of the heart and suck the clot from the artery supplying the lung. This is through little veins and or cuts in, into the arteries or veins, like you talked about for the the True. heart attacks. True. Yeah. Unlike the heart attack where we do it through the hand, this we do predominantly through the veins and the leg. Right. Uh, and part of the reason is it's it's a larger catheter that we go up uh, into the heart and suck the clot. So we need a little bigger catheter to suck the clot. Uh, hence, it's done through the groin. Uh, and again, we've had some remarkable responses to these procedures. We've had people who are at, who are elderly patients who are at high risk of bleeding from the clot busting medications who are not very good candidates for them. That's where we come in. Uh, and it, 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 it immediately relieves the pressure uh, and gets the patient better. Uh, so it, it's been an exciting field uh, that has had uh, more prominence in the last two years, I would say. Again, the technology has improved in that field that allows us to do these procedures. Uh, and we've been certainly at the forefront of it, doing it. Uh, and that service is again available to a large population of patients. So, you know, there are two catastrophic events that can happen that can put your life at risk. One is the heart attack and other is the pulmonary embolism. So our team is geared to manage both. Uh, if you have this problem, you don't have to guess what it is. We will take care of it, uh, irrespective of what the problem is. Uh, and the key is seek the help. Right, so chest pain, shortness of breath. You can't walk too far without becoming tired. Uh, sudden onset of these symptoms that isn't going away. This is when our viewers need to pick up the phone, call 911, and, and for a large portion of our borough here in Brooklyn, you and your team is available to unblock uh, a heart attack and restore blood flow to the heart. Your team is available to open up the, the veins that are up in the lungs that are blocked by a pulmonary embolism and save lives. This is all great and good. We're, we're, we're excited. Let's spend one minute talking about prevention. True. You have a cardiology clinic here at South Brooklyn Health where patients can come and see doctors to maybe prevent themselves from getting into this trouble. How can they seek out help to prevent these terrible, terrible things we talked about? That is very true. Prevention is the most important thing. And we uh, at South Brooklyn have a very active clinic. In fact, we have clinic uh, five days a week. So we've made ourselves accessible to people every day of the week so that they can seek help. Um, they can get to our system, either being referred through their provider on the outside, or they can just come call our referral center and set up an appointment and get to see us. And uh, we have, the reason we have five days a week is because not everybody uh, can come on a particular day. So we've made it as easy as possible. We have two clinics uh, in a month that is a late clinic. So people who are working, uh, who can't take off from work can come to the late clinic and see us. Uh, so we've made it as accessible as possible to see us. Now, you can also reach out to your primary care provider and get some of the work done if that's 
that's yeah, so easier it, to do. We, we encourage all of our, our patients to have a primary doctor. True. Um, that's the first step in, in healthcare here in, in America is to have a primary doctor. If you're having cardiac symptoms or symptoms you feel that you need a cardiologist, your team is available. They gave me a phone number here. It's 718-616-5505. Correct. That's correct. That's our referral center. Yes. And that's uh, a, a good number to have for the patients as well as for primary care providers. I, this is something that's important for all physicians out there that we would like them to know what services we provide and that they can reach us and have patients refer to us uh, for any of these workup uh, that they require. And that would be a good number to call to set up the process to make it easier. Dr. Hegde, this is exciting uh, to have this. I live in this neighborhood. I feel safer after speaking with you. I know that if I ever have chest pain, I'm calling 911, and our viewers should too, and know of the advances that you have created here at South Brooklyn Health to save lives. So thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for your interest in our show and your desire to become involved and educated in healthcare. I invite you to visit our website at www.zormed.com. Check out our tools and connect with us on social media. You can also call us at 718-510-2103. Uh, please stay well and stay healthy. Uh, goodbye. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hegde. Thank you. Thank you.